Okay. I thought I would do this little uh, video for uh, the essentials in Chapter 2. And hopefully you all received my email and got a chance to check it out if you thought that it would be useful. So Chapter 2 is uh, focused on the chemical and physical properties of water. And some of the physical properties you need to be aware of is the fact that water is tetrahedrally coordinated as an unshared pair of electrons on the oxygen, which gives it a partial negative charge on one uh, apex. And at the base of this tetrahedron is a partial positive charge contributed by the bonded hydrogens. And this gives uh, water its polar quality, making it making it very useful as uh, a solvent because it will essentially uh, solvate or hydrate. Okay, solvate would be used to refer to uh, the um, suspension of solutes in an aqueous solution and hydrate usually refers to that aqueous solution uh, as water. And also the fact that there are charges makes uh, water or gives water the ability to solubilize um, ionic solutes. And so we want to make sure that uh, you understand those properties of water. Uh, as ice water can form these crystals, uh, these crystalline structures, as water orders itself uh, with other water molecules in a hydrogen bonded network. Okay, we have the covalently bonded hydrogens in a hydrogen bond with the oxygen. And um, this can form a, a nice little network uh, between the water, the oxygen, and the hydrogen. So this hydrogen bond uh, is very abundant and can form these little crystalline structures in ice. However, liquid water is, is more irregular and the hydrogen bonding can occur, uh, but it's more, uh, more or less irregular in terms of the position of the tetrahedral structures in the aqueous solution uh, and the position of the hydrogen bonds. It could be different positions. So it's uh, less regular. But this facilitates the, the movement of the, the um, movement of electrons uh, through water. Uh, they, they can jump from one molecule to the next. And this jumping is why electricity uh, can travel through water. So this hydrogen bonding and the ionic bonding associated with the charges uh, contribute to what's called the hydrophobic effect. And that is the, the free energy associated with water trying to disorder itself in a volume will drive a hydrophobic molecule uh, to, to aggregate into an aggregate. And this, uh, this is driven by the, the fact that water uh, being forced to order itself around this hydrophobic solute will tend to uh, drive this aggregation. 
So that's what this is some of the other properties of water. Also, we need to know the uh, distinction between uh, diffusion and uh, osmosis. Okay, you know that's the movement of water from an area of high concentration to low concentration. Uh, and osmotic pressure is a measure of the pressure that water exerts on a surface when it tries to move from high to low. And of course, as solutes move from high to low, uh, this is referred to as diffusion. And that is a property, of course, that occurs in an aqueous solution, uh, whether it's water or, or some other aqueous solution. So those are the physical properties of water. Uh, chemically, you need to remember that water ionizes uh, the hydroxide ion and the hydrogen ion, which we tend to represent in this way, but really exists uh, in what's called a hydronium. And so the ionization of water uh, allows one to determine a dissociation constant for that water, which is equivalent to the concentration of products over the reactants. And water is very concentrated, 55 molar, so it essentially is one in biological systems. Uh, so we use a convention uh, which we refer to as pH which is a negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. And that convention uh, is scaled, scaled from 0 to 14. Of course, 7 being a neutral solution, 14 being basic, and of course, 0 being acidic. And so this convention now uh, is used in determining um, the uh, hydrogen ion concentration in a solution. Now in biological solutions, uh, we need to maintain a pH which is about neutral, about 7.4. And what we need to do that with is a buffer because cells contain uh, acidic and uh, and basic acidic groups, amino acids in particular, uh, basic groups, uh, ammonia uh, byproducts that contribute to the solution and could cause a pH of 7 to go up or down uh, when these cells uh, die and release their content. So we need a system in which, uh, well, there is a system to uh, take care of this dramatic change that could occur in a solution. Uh, there are many compounds in uh, the cell that function as buffers, and these are usually weak acids or weak bases, and they're usually represented in this way when they, the uh, weak acid here, when it reacts with water, will give us a hydrogen ion or hydronium ion, plus the, uh, what's equivalent to the hydroxide ion, but we refer to it as a conjugate base. All right, and the conjugate base, uh, when it's in equilibrium with the weak acid, uh, can function as a buffer. Uh, this has a equilibrium constant association for the acid, which is equivalent to the concentration of products over the reactants. Okay, and we then can apply our convention for uh, our hydrogen ion concentration to
to the acid dissociation constant. And this will give us our henderson hasselbach equation. I will use PK uh, plus the log of the conjugate base over the weak acid. Okay, and PK is equivalent to the negative log of that acid dissociation constant. So by taking the negative log of both sides, we reduce the equation to get this. And we can determine the pH of a solution if we know the concentrations of the conjugate base and weak acid and the pK value, which we can look up in a table, particularly for different biological uh, weak, weak acid compounds. All right, and finally, um, in our chapter four, we dealt with a number of uh, acids, which are involved in creating our proteins. Okay, these are what are called amino acids. Okay. This is the acidic portion. This is the proton donor. And uh, the amino portion is on this end. And at neutral pH, this is usually negatively charged. This is usually positively charged. pH equal to 7.4. And if, let's say, this was a Which, which amino acid is this? This is threonine, THR, or T. And so if we look at this structure, we see that it's charged at pH 7 because the pK, that is the point at which the carboxyl group, we'll begin with the carboxyl the point at which the carboxyl group loses or gains a proton. Okay, so we can represent this carboxyl in this way. This is the weak at, at equilibrium. The pK uh, for this alpha, remember this is the alpha carbon, alpha carboxyl group is equal to 2.2. The nitrogen also can dissociate. All right, and this is its conjugate, which is neutral. And the weak acid, which can donate the proton, is positively charged. Conjugate base. It's pK, alpha amine group, equals 9.4. All right, 9.4. So we can look at this and, and uh, the usually get what you usually get. I'll try to render it here in this section here. Is a uh, curve as pH goes up, hydrogen ion concentration is increasing in this. Have a plateau here. And this center of this plateau is usually where the pK is for that functional group, COOH to COO minus. Again, in equilibrium at this point. And as we go tenfold increase in the concentration of our conjugate base, uh, we go up to a pH of about uh, 3.2. This is the end of the titration. This is the end of the plateau. And uh, the beginning is about 1.2 or 1 pH unit below. So plus or minus 1 pH unit equals uh, plus or minus 1 pH unit is our buffer region. And of course, as we continue to add base, we reach another plateau, which is where the amine group loses its proton to form its conjugate. 
And again, it's plus or minus one pH unit above and below pK, which is equal to 9.4 for the uh, amine group. Is also our buffer region up at this end. Okay, so hopefully this is a <clears throat> this was a, a little little uh, summary of what we covered in chapter two, and also a little bit about what we covered in chapter four um, concerning amino acid structures. Again, you need to know those structures, understand where the alpha carbon the carboxyl and the amine groups are and what they mean in terms of the structure of the amino acids, what the side chains mean, which ones are polar, uh, charged or uncharged, and which are nonpolar. Okay? All right, I'll see you in class.